Alright, what's going on everyone? Today we are continuing to explore Explorer by testing old standard decks to see if they can stand up to this larger format. And today we're testing, technically we're testing Rakdos Aggro. I, this is like one of the first arena videos I ever posted and we were updating it in some interesting ways. So if you're not familiar with this, we get like gutter bones, one mana, two power. We get Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is a one mana, one, two, but if the opponent loses four or more life on our turn, gets a counter and it can pump itself. We get Dreadhorde Butcher. It's a two mana one one with haste. But when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And it gets a counter every time it hits a player or planeswalker. Uh, we get Midnight Reaper, three mana three two. Whenever a non-token creature dies, we take a damage and draw a card. And then the big payoff is Judith the Scourge Diva, which is a three mana two two. Other creatures we control get plus one plus zero. And then whenever non-token creatures die, we deal one damage to any target. So all of this was in standard. This was a standard deck. But now we get a ton of updates. First off, we get this new aggro powerhouse, two mana, three, two, and it can be blitzed from your graveyard. So that's pretty great. But what's really cool about this is even though we're super aggressive, we have tons of one and two drops that lead into this Lord effect. We're also a mid range deck at the same time because we have planeswalkers that work with our aggro strategy. So first off, we have Zariel. Is that how that's pronounced? First off, the plus one ability will give all of our creatures plus one, plus zero, and haste. So that's perfect for all of our aggro threats. But also, zero mana, make a one, one devil that when it dies, it deals a damage. So that means that it won't work with Judith technically, because Judith says non-token. But the combination of all of our stuff dying and Judith dealing damage and then also making devil tokens that deal damage. It, it really helps with an aggro deck uh, finishing the game off once the board starts building up, right? Same thing with Omnixilus. He also makes these devil tokens. So that's great. Also has a plus one ability that can just drain life. And we also have Lolth draws cards, makes spider tokens and gets loyalty when stuff dies and we love our stuff dying. Our stuff dies, we deal damage. Our stuff dies, we draw cards. Our stuff dies, it deals even more damage. So we're just like super aggressive, throwing all of our stuff at our opponent, but also like we're kind of happy if our aggro threats die. It's actually a payoff for our aggro threats to get blocked. So we're either going to just hit our opponent as aggressively as possible, or they're going to kill our stuff and we're going to continue to deal damage to them regardless. So that's the idea. Is it good enough for our explorer? There's only one way to find out, and that's to actually play the things. So let's uh let's give this a try. This is weird. Why aren't the hands coming up? That was that was a little bit delayed. Um, but this is fine. It's it's fast, but kind of we have a big gap in our mana values. Hopefully we draw like two and three drops. That'd be good. Oh, and it's playing. Uh, that's not a that's not a two or three drop. Play gutter bones turn one. We'll play this and knight next turn. The good news is we have a mana sink, so if we don't draw anything for turn three, we can just activate this. That sucks, because we are an aggro deck, and they're going to get aggro stuff off our off our deck. It looks like they got a land, which uh, I didn't necessarily need. Okay, so do I want... I think I want this, right? I'd rather have this turn two. Play this. Attack for two. I might block... Not 100% sure. I kind of like being able to deal 5 and then getting a counter here. It, they should go to combat and attack first. Because then I don't know what I should do. If they spend all their mana, then I can make a better decision here. But they might kill my underdog. They highlighted it. It definitely simplifies my uh, my choices. Yeah, alright. And I, I froze for a second. Sure. Alright, hit me for 2. Get an eye twitch, which they can play, and block my gutter bones. That's annoying. They don't have, they're probably, I assume, I assume, oh, I don't have two black sources. Uh, pain. Um, I'm going to play this to have a mana seek next turn if I don't, uh, if I don't draw more land. They did get this off the top, which is unfortunate. Good news is if they go super wide, we do have a... Oh yeah, I didn't talk about that in the deck tech. This is super sweet for our deck because it's a board sweeper for behind. For not, makes three one ones. 
uh, that deal damage, which again, perfect for our strategy. Like, we're basically playing this for the tokens, generally. But in situations like this, where we're behind, it can be a board sweeper, which it might be this game. I'm going to take this three. Yep. Great. Great, we need one more land. Uh, so I think we play this. And then we no block. Or no attack. So we can block. Uh, this have to be activated at sorcery speed? No. I forget. It's been a while. It's been a couple, a year or two since that's been in standard. I forget. But it can be used as a blocker. So now we have a potential 3-4 blocker. If we draw a land, can start thinking about board wiping and stuff. Attack for one, that's f okay. So they must have a pump spell. But I'm doing this regardless. Great. So they don't, or they have a burn spell. If we draw a land and they don't play another creature, I might just do Lulz. Because I have two of them, so I don't care if she gets swept up by the burn down the house. Chandra. Well, that makes me just want to burn down the house. Okay. Well, we draw the land. They have four cards in hand, so... Board sweeping feels kind of bad when they can just recover with four cards. If I play... See, what, what's the worst case here? She, uh... She can't hit Planeswalker, so if I play this in minus... Hmm. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do... I'm actually gonna attack all here. If they just don't block, I, I'll pump. Maybe. Alright. I'm actually not gonna pump. That's fine. Sure. Hey, listen, jerk. And then we'll just Move deal 5 it. damage to everything. Great. Wipe everything out. They have 4 cards. But we can play lol. Start getting uh, creature tokens. They haven't played much. And X, that's fine. Alright, well... Let's start trying to take over the game now. Darkness. I'm going to double block of the attack. Okay. That's actually fine. Kind of. Great. It deals extra damage, but it doesn't have, like, first strike or anything. Would love to draw a removal spell now. Yep, get a couple of counters. I Aren't I generous? Judith would be cool. I think the play is minus three. I will get two tokens. Play low. Uh, minus three. So we just have to hope like they don't have Ember Cleave with Trample. Because they have attackers now, right? So, like, an Ember Cleave on Torbrin is really bad. Chandra is not the worst. She can kill low. Right? Or can she only hit creatures? She can only hit creatures. Yep. She You're can't kill low. That's good. Land. So what's the play here? Kind of scary to draw cards. Really scary to draw cards. These can't block. So I'm going to draw cards. No, I'm not. I'm going to play low Or Judith. I'm going to send three of these here. They can block one, and it takes six no matter what. Great. It's over when I say it's over. Play another creature. Okay, I'll draw a card. Don't want that. Don't want to play that. Don't want to take damage from that. So if they have another Chandra, or an Ember Cleave. Oh, they have four lands to activate Den now. That's not so bad. Does hit my planeswalker. So that's a bummer. If I draw a removal spell, well, now it doesn't matter. Never mind. Forget I said anything. So I have to block these. Um because I'm at two life and Torbrin kills me. So I gotta block these. We deal one. Deal one here. Um, is there anything that helps me here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I mean, I could gain life. None of these have haste. This is a removal spell. So we'll do this. Need to remove, uh, Torbrin. 
That's really cool. Alright, so... Probably... Just... Get rid of Torbrin. Great. And then... Attack with two of these. Great, they go to 11. Alright, so... When you cast your next creature spell, it gets a counter. I forgot this deals damage to Planeswalkers. Because I almost always play it on turn 1 and there's no Planeswalkers in play. Um... Oh wait, am I dead to Den? Den of the Bugbear? Well, we can't gain life now. That's actually very dangerous. The one damage is terrifying. Oh, another creature. Dang it. Come on, man. Stop playing creatures. Alright, well... We have to block both of these. Great. Deal a damage here. Land. They only have one blocker. I can play this. And we have, uh... We have Den of the Bugbear. If I attack all out, they block here. They take three. Not good enough. Okay, they have four attackers. I have four blockers. That's fine. The danger is the devil. Oh, Torbrin. Torbrin makes it less fine. Torbrin kills me with the devil dying. If they attack all out, I'm dead. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, because this devil dying, uh, it's going to deal two damage to me. Because of Torbrin. It's going to deal three damage, actually. Alright, let's, uh... Let's give this deck a try. Oh, that's an aggro hand, and we're going first. So... This is, uh, looking decent. Don't know if these Dread Horde Butchers are going to get through or not, but... We'll try. Play a Gutter Bones. Play Dread Horde Butcher turn 2. Really hope there's not a creature on the battlefield. If there is, we probably attack into it anyway. Yeah, well, whatever. Sure. Um. God, it just feels like such a waste. I'm not going to. I want to wait a turn. Going to attack with this. Next turn, we'll attack no matter what. That way, we might be able to have a second creature to uh, kill. Which is good. Cauldron Familiar. So this is Rakdos Sacrifice. Rakdos Food. That sort of stuff. Great. Block. Kill this. Two for one's fine. Now this uh, Dread Horde Butcher might get through. Yes, because they tapped out. Nice. Sure, so play this. Play the other gutter bones. Attack for three. Get a counter. Nice. Blood Crypt. Sure, there's another. No, just another gutter bones. Why not? Uh, attack for six. Attack for six. Alright, fair enough. Sure. Still deals two. Then they take four. And I'll play another Gutter Bones. Just all the Gutter Bones. Haunted Ridge. Draw a land. We can play Loth, which is great. Um, Nixilis. It's really good. The devil is obnoxious. Well, there's the land. Let's do two here, one here. Yep, that's reasonable. Could I have killed them if I attacked with the Den of the Bugbear? Three, four, five, six, seven. I could have. Yeah, I won there if I attack with the Den. Whoops. Whoops. You know, that's a... That's a whoops. The whoops there. It's Go fine. Who needs to win when we can play LOL? I mean, which is more fun? Which is more fun? I winning, which you do all the time, or casting LOL? Actually, with that sacrifice, I probably wouldn't have won because I could have blocked one, sacrificed, and killed another. Yeah. Thought seize? Sure. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I don't know what that was. But okay. All right. Let's get a win. Maybe. Um, fine. <laughs> it looks like we're playing mono black. But that's fine. I'm just playing green. 
Uh, sure. I'll play this because it can block the 1-1 one, one and get a, uh, uh the, the thing that gets a land. They don't attack, though, which is reasonable. Um, I might pay the three life for this, actually. Um, pay three life. Play this. Attack for two. That's fine. That means the Love Struck Beast can't attack, which was the goal. Um, I just want to stall now. I'm basically stalling. Gonna try to play a mid range game since we're against the Love Struck Beast. Sure. Um, play this. So I can play this. It could help me get my lands, actually. Yeah, so I'll play this. I'm actually not going to attack, because if they play a 1-1 one, one and attack with a Love Struck Beast, I want to block with a Night Twitch. The 1 damage isn't that big of a deal. What are they playing, though? Is it just, like, Naya Adventures? What's going on? 4-color Adventures, okay. Bone Crusher Giant. Well, I'll draw a card. There's Judith. Hmm. Play this on black so I can do Eye Twitch, Red Wanderer, Gutter Bones. Attack for one. I'm attacking for one now because I have more blockers. And um, if they hit me for five, I can play this backswing for a lot more. I, I, I attack for ten on the backswing. That's fine. Or we just draw a land, so I'm going to... Not worry about Judith this turn. Play this. Get a couple counters. Or a couple tokens. Attack for two flying. Great. And now we have Judith. And now we just have all this power. Omnath is pretty good. Could uh, help them gain life, right? Yeah, they gain four. Does this have reach? No. Good. Alright. Draw another land. Um, let's draw first. Shred Horde Butcher. Hmm. Play Judith. So it's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. It can just be blocked by the 5-5 five, five though, right? Maybe it's worth it. Play this. Attack here, 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 and here. If they backswing and kill my Loth, I don't think it's the end of the world. They can bounce Judith. That's devastating. Please don't. Please don't do that. They're highlighting it. This is very bad. Hopefully they're just reading it. Reading how the damage works. I forgot with Judith, this does an extra damage, right? So it'll, like if it gets blocked by Lovestruck Beast, it'll deal two, then it'll die and deal two, but then Judith will deal one. So it deals five. They just block... Like a gutter bones or something. They take what? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I can always just get gutter bones and dread horde or dread wonder back to my hand. So that's like not the end of the world. Great. So deal a damage here. Get a loyalty counter. Get a plus one plus one counter. Maybe I should play the land, so because it has to be one or fewer cards in hand. What is that nine though? So this shows you what Judith is doing, right? Tons of power. And it's, it makes blocks difficult because I can distribute a bunch of damage, you know, after blocks are lined up. After combat damage is being dealt. So just gives your creatures a lot of reach. Where it's like if they block these three ones, like they're going to die and deal damage and kill like four fours and five fives and stuff. So it's kind of sketchy to be blocking stuff like that. Sure. Opponent goes to 13. Gets a bunch of mana. Can play one of these. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. Can cast a beanstalk giant if they want. Ow. You win this Is that hit planeswalkers? What? For you. 4 damage to each opponent and each planeswalker. You don't control. It's really good. It's like it's modern playable or something. Um, sure. Deal a damage here. That might be game. Without Judith, this looks really bad. <laughs> Judith is kind of important, and we haven't drawn any of our other... Arzario Planeswalker. 
which also like really helps. All right, we'll play this. Doesn't have to deal damage. It's just no. We have two or fewer cards, so we'll t get this, and then I'm gonna attack with one. Only leave one back as a blocker to get the learn. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want to play this because if I draw a land, I can play Mascot Exhibition. Reveals our hand. Now they know we don't have anything. But if the eye twitch dies and we draw a land, we can play Mascot Exhibition. Yep. Let's hope this can't just magically gain trample with this one card. It cannot. Great. So we're going to get the Mascot Exhibition. So now like, we're going to draw something useful no matter what, right? We're either going to draw action or draw the land for this. Worst case scenario is we draw a tap land. Because then we just get nothing. So don't want to see a tap land off top. But basically anything else is good. Beanstalk giant. Yep. A uh, lot is pretty good. Alright, we'll play that. Not sure what happened to the sound there. Alright, uh, we will minus. Get some two ones. Uh, I don't need this now. I'm gonna use this to peck some damage through. Great. So if nothing dies, um, you know, we can draw a card. Hopefully get the land for this. At that point, we have, uh, three damage flying every turn. Never mind. Kills the Butcher. Going to, uh, do this. I actually could have I'm saved... Sure miss me. I could have saved Loth by killing my own creature. I just realized that. Like, too late. Did she have one or two loyalty? She had two. Or she had one. She got a loyalty from Dread Horde Butcher dying. And if I would have, like, killed my own Eye Twitch, I actually would have gotten another counter. So, block here. Because we have, like, infinite blockers, right? Block. Great. Sure. Well, there's the land. We'll just play that. Attack for one. When it goes to seven. Sure. I don't know why the, the audio is like... Things aren't playing the audio correctly. I don't know. It's really weird. So they gain four. Cycling. So they're not going to gain life. That's nice. Never mind. They gain the life. Alright, so we block here. Block with one of these. Sure. Ooh. So let's, uh... What's more important to kill? Because I, I have these locked down by with, the, like, infinite blocking. This life is what's concerning me. I'm actually going to kill this. Great. And then we will... Attack for one, uh, three. I can just play this. They can't gain life anymore. We're gonna lose a couple more, uh... Couple more thingies here, but that's fine. Lock here. Great. Ooh, that is kind of exciting. Going to play this. No audio again. Gonna make a devil. Going to attack for a three flying. Going to return this to hand. And play it. Great. Now I can block these again. I can just keep getting this back. That's kind of terrifying. Oh god. Lots of lucky clover. Life gain. Don't like the life gain. The good news is with these devils building up, they just constantly deal damage, right? This is an exile, so they can't use that to to damage uh, this. Sure. Draw a card. Card draw is what's going to kill me. Lucky Clover. Don't know why the audio doesn't play. It's really interesting. No attacks? That's weird. Alright, so... I'm going to make another devil, actually. I'm just going to keep making devils. That's all I need. You These don't have reach, the so... Attack for three, flying. Great. Return this. 
replay it with no audio. And this is an instant, so we'll hold that up. Opponent's at six. We're grinding away. This card draw is what I don't like. I might need to kill that end of turn. Maybe I should kill it now. Is it when you cast? Yeah. Maybe I should have just killed that. Just don't want them drawing cards. They have all of this stuff, though. They have so many cards. Maybe I should just give up. Oh, that's not what I want to see. That's going to allow them to get some answer to my board. That might be it, actually. Um, negate is fine, actually. Don't know why there's no audio. No audio in my headphones. I don't know if it's getting through to the video. But I can't hear very much audio. Uh, that sucks. That sucks. That really sucks. And an Ugin. Can this go Planeswalkers? Can. Um, is there anything I can do? No. And that's the game. God dang it, man. Alright, so that's Judith Aggro. What are my thoughts? First off, I think it's better than our record shows, because our record is 1 and 2. But our two losses were super grindy, and we were there, you know, we were grinding out the entire game. Just didn't quite have that edge to, to get on top. So I don't feel bad about our, the two losses we had. And our win was pretty sweet. Um, what do I don't like about this deck? I don't think Dreadhorde Butcher is good enough in this build. I think it could be good in an all-out aggro deck with a lot of removal. Like a, a Rakdos aggro deck that's more focused on like burn. So it can burn off a blocker. But we don't have ways to get rid of blockers. So it, it felt way too hard uh, to get that first attack. So it just felt kind of useless. Um, Midnight Reaper also... Might not be great. I mean, obviously drawing cards is awesome, but it just didn't feel too great. I don't know if it's that useful. Um, I do like this overlap of aggro and, and mid-range because I, I didn't talk about it in my intro, but like Gutter Bones, sure, it's an aggro threat. It's a one mana two one, but it returns. And we saw that in the, the adventure game where it just kept returning, kept blocking. Same thing with Dread, uh, Dread Wanderer. Um, also, it's an aggro threat, 1 mana, 2, 1, but it just keeps coming back. So, the fact that we have, oh, same thing with Tenacious, uh, Underdog, right? We have all these aggro threats that come back from the graveyard, which makes them, you know, mid-rangey, right? Early game, we have aggro. Late game, we have mid-range with these aggro threats, uh, recurring. So, I think it's a cool theme. I think it's, it could work. It just felt a little sub-optimal. I kind of want more of these. This Planeswalker is awesome, and I just didn't draw it enough. But if I'm going forward with the deck, I'm probably taking out Dreadhorde Butcher, probably taking out Midnight Reaper, and finding more uh, aggro threats in the low end. So yeah, that's my thought. We went 1-2. Deck felt strong. It just... No, we didn't win those, those grindy matches, which is too bad. I guess that's the downside of playing a deck like this, is while we are capable of being grindy with all the stuff up here, um, it also means that we're top-decking stuff that feels kind of bad late game, so... We're kind of in this weird in-between uh, state. But overall, I kind of like the deck. And uh, I want to experiment with it more. don't know if I'll record with it more. But I want to want to play around with the deck list. I think it could be pretty cool with, uh, with a little tweaking. So there you go. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one.